If you are somebody who loves to write online, you should definitely be on Substack. I've been writing on this platform for nine months now and I think it is brilliant. If you've been thinking about starting a newsletter on Substack, here is how to create an account and get started. To sign up, simply go to the Substack website and click on the Start Writing button. Now you can create an account using your email address. My tip, if you are planning to create a successful newsletter business, you should consider using a new and unique email address. Why? To keep your newsletter activity separate from your personal life. So I use a specific business email address. Now type in your name and write two to three sentences about yourself for your short biography, which you can edit at any time. Now comes the part that seems deceptively simple, naming your publication. You might think the easiest piece is the name of your newsletter. Well, it's not. People think for hours about what to name that new baby. It's really akin to choosing a name for your newborn. Why the fuss? Because this name is your first handshake with potential subscribers. It's the essence of what you represent compacted into a word or two. So some say you should choose your publication's name wisely. Substack's default suggestion is your first name, but considering the vast sea of Tonys and Christinas out there, you might want to spice things up a bit. Plus, often it's already taken. So you could go with your first and last name, but you can choose any name you like. Substack nudges gently that a good title captures what your publication is about at the highest level. Picture yourself on a podcast your publication name resonating through the airwaves. Does it click or not? In general, Substack lays down the mantra, is it memorable, short and easy to say and spell. So the name of your newsletter should be a cozy nest for two important birds, memorability and brevity. Let me show you why. First, a name that sticks will be recollected later and shared with friends both online and offline. This word of mouth referral will most likely grow your subscriber base. Your audience will be more likely to open your newsletters if they can recall the name of your publication. They might forget that they signed up if you choose a name that is difficult for them to remember, in which case they will unsubscribe from your list and that's not what you want. To be honest, I didn't think about my publication's name too much or make it complicated. With the newsletter, I wanted to strengthen my personal brand, so I decided to call it Christina's Newsletter. Some might say that's a mistake. No one knows what it's about. It should be more specific. But there is also one of Substack's most successful writers who annually earns more than 1.5 million. His personal newsletter is called Lenny's Newsletter and he recently crossed 500,000 subscribers. The takeaway, it is your call. If your aim is to brand grows, your name can be your brand. If you want to build a niche newsletter around a specific topic, give it a catchy name so that there's no question about what it's about and make it better discoverable via Google by picking keywords that new subscribers might search for when they're trying to fight your publication. Is my kid the asshole is a great example. And remember, while you can always revisit and tweak your publication name, the initial choice matters. I'll show you why. With the name comes the URL of your publication. So all subsects are automatically set up with a unique URL domain. Your unique address on the web is formatted as domain.substack.com. Want to share soup recipes under hot soups? Your URL would be hotsoups.substack.com, which is still available. When you first create a publication, the URL is always a subdomain of substack.com. This means your publication's URL always has substack.com at the end. So writers also have the liberty to link their custom domain to Substack if they want to shed Substack from the URL. For this, Substack is charging a one-time fee of 50 US dollars per publication. This customization available under settings domain not only enhances your brand identity, but can also be a boon for your Google rankings and trust authority once you authenticate ownership with Google. One caveat to bear in mind, while you can change your publication's name anytime in the settings, altering your publication subdomain is a one-shot deal in the settings danger zone without breaking links. If you want to change your publication name to something more specific, such as hot spicy soups, it's totally fine. If not going with your name, invest some time brewing a catchy publication name since it's also the domain of your newsletter. Utilize keywords and synonyms that resonate with your audience. 
fostering a creative yet relevant newsletter name. While you can amend your publication's name at your whim, remember that the subdomain change is a one-time affair without disrupting links. Pro tip. Linking a custom domain to Substack not only refines your URL, but also bolsters your visibility in Google searches, paving a smoother path toward growing your readership. Have a list of emails you'd like to import to your Substack account. In the next step, you can select a file and import your mailing list by uploading a CSV file from another newsletter service provider, such as MailChimp, Ghost, Patreon, Beehive or ConvertKit. When you write on medium.com and have already a subscriber base, then you can also export your audience and import it to your Substack to not start from scratch. But for now, since we are starting with our newsletter, let's skip this step. Let's dive into your interests. Substack is more than just a newsletter platform. It is a network of writers and readers. So select topics you'd love to see stories about in your home feed. Let's pick business and music plus parenting and education. According to Lenny from Lenny's newsletter, Substack's recommendations engine is one of the most impactful growth features in the history. So here you get a first glimpse into the recommendation system. You can subscribe to all seven that Substack recommends or unselect the ones that don't fit. Congratulations and welcome to your Substack dashboard. But before you start customizing your Substack publication, go to settings and let's cover some basics first. Let's say we want to change the publication name to Soups on Fire. Simple yet powerful. Then we want to explain what we write about and create a short description. Recipes, reviews and reflections on the world of hot and spicy soups from newly discovered peppers to innovative cooking techniques rated by the level of spiciness from warm hock to call the fire department. Why is the short description of your Substack publication so important? This short description appears at the top of the welcome page. So let's be even more specific to help people discover your publication by selecting a primary and secondary category. Let's select from the drop down menu food and drinks and travel because you love to travel to Asia, Africa, Latin America and share new recipes. A spicy Thai coconut soup can definitely transport you to a far off beach with a single spoonful. So my tip, if you want to write about food and drinks, check out the department of salad. This is what your Substack publication could look like. For now, the stage is set for the steaming soul food symphony of your hot spicy soup recipes the publication will soon cover. In the upcoming chapters, we'll go one step further, customize our publication and write our first newsletter edition. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the like button. See you next time and take care.